service will start in my 
And waiting, keep looking up. Filled with his goodness, I'm lost in his love. This is my story. This is my song. I'm just praising my soul. Just praising my Savior. I'm just praising my Savior. Oh, the day long. This is my story. This is. Praising my say, yeah, all the day long. This is my story. This is my. Praising my Savior all oh, the day long. Come with me, if you will. Paul's first letter to the church at Thessalonica, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. When you found that place, just say amen. 5 and 17 is recorded. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. 
and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to talk briefly from this subject matter, the efficacy of prayer. The efficacy of prayer. It's not uncommon knowledge that prayer still works. It can change some things. And sometimes it goes further than that. When it's not working on things, it can work on you. Sometimes it's not really the things that are the issue. Sometimes God fixes it so that we have to give credence to the maladjustments of thoughts and the occurrence of evil that would betray us, that would draw our attention away from the center of our being which is Christ himself. The efficacy of prayer is simply defined as the capacity to produce a desired result through your efforts. In other words, it's dealing with the effectiveness of prayer. It becomes a remedy for whatever it is that may be troubling you. If you can just get an audience with Jesus, he can work it out. Do I have a witness? And so this morning we want to deal with this particular text in the context of Paul, the great apostle, who was given to the ministry of exhorting the word of God to people who had lost their way, people who had lost hope, people who were in need of deliverance. Paul gave a summary of the virtuous qualities of Christianity. These verses will provide uh, fundamental principles for a sound spiritual life. In brief, he talks with regards to a staccato statement. In spite of their brevity, he also uh, gives the believers priorities for successful Christian living. It's incumbent upon us to know that it's not how well our speech is, but how well our speech is connected to our walk, and our walk is connected with God. For the Bible has declared that the steps of any person, a good man, a good woman, are always ordered by the Lord. Are you listening to me? Uh, there are times when we are so conflicted that we can't hear the word of God. We oftentimes commit to the process of reciting the words, but not really understanding the word. We are, we are listening to noises of destruction and wondering why our hope keeps fading. Paul talks to the church and uh, he 
says rejoice. When times get hard, you ought to know how to find your help. The 16th verse in this same said chapter, he just encourages the church to learn how to be happy. You know, there's some people that you can't please. And there's some people that God can't please. I wish I had a witness. And therefore, we are laden uh, with miseries because we don't know how to take our burdens and our cares and give them to the Lord. Paul says that you ought to pray. And I don't mean any harm, but every child of God ought to know how to pray. And praying is not praying is not just the utterance of a multitude of words, but a conversation of understanding regarding the hope of a philosophy that fails us not. Therefore, Paul says, "Rejoice and to pray." This does not mean. Pray repetitiously or continuously without a break. That is not what he's saying, but he's really saying something that is greater and much, much more meaningful and powerful than even those words. I don't mean to bore you here, but it's here that Matthew's gospel says, in the sixth chapter, the seventh verse, but when you pray, I wish I had a witness. And I like, I like that when you pray. Because some people are so busy they don't get around to praying. Some only pray every now and then. But when you pray, don't worry about using vain repetitions uh, such as the heathens do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus says, Be not ye therefore like unto them for your father. Y'all ought to mark this verse right here. Your father. Your father knows what things you have need of. Anybody with me? Before you ask. Mm. Therefore, he's clearing a path for us to rejoice in difficult times. He's clearing a path for us to bring all our cares and our worries to him. And he said rather you should pray persistently. In, in Luke's gospel, chapter number 11, he starts off in verse number one. He says, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, you see before it was when you pray, but now when you're looking at Jesus, he said when he was praying in a certain place, which gives an example that you ought to always pray. When he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. You know, if prayer changes things, then we ought to know how to pray. And the efficacy of your prayers take meaning. When you know how to pray, and since God already knows what you have need of before you even ask, Paul recommends that you give thanks. I wish I had a witness here. Thankfulness is what we ought to be doing. Uh, 
Thanklessness is a trait of unbelievers. And y'all didn't hear what I said. I said thanklessness is a trait of unbelievers. And, and therefore, there are many unbelievers that will have you to think that God is not in the blessing business because they haven't learned how to be thankful. Today, I'm thankful. Anybody in the house have anything thing to be thankful for? I, I'm, 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 I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And, 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 and the record bears proof of it. Paul in Romans 1 and 21 says, because of that, when they knew God, they glorified him, not neither were thankful. Mm, you know, it's bad when uh, you blame God for not blessing you, and the real reason is that you're not thankful. I wish I had a praying church. I can recall, I can recall uh, someone asking for some help, a handout, and when I went into my pocket and gave him of my treasure, he looked at me and said, that's all? Whatever I gave him was more than he had in, come on, help me somebody. And, and, and so we must learn how to be thankful. Sometimes the going is tough. Sometimes the road is rough. But because you're still here to experience the power of God, you ought to take a moment and thank him for the journey. Do I have a witness in the house? Therefore, therefore, uh, we find here that the summary of these particular uh, staccato events that is given in brevity is to inform the church. Looking in Paul's Thessalonian writings, he says in verse number 14, now we exhort you. You, you, you see, some, some, some people are all about themselves. But Paul says we exhort you. In other words, if you are worth your salt, you ought to know how to every now and then encourage somebody else. Nobody got to where they are without some help. You might say, well, I don't like where I am. Maybe you've been getting help from the wrong person. Do I have a witness? But I serve a God that, that, that is able to bring you out of darkness into a marvelous light. I serve a God that can renew your strength. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost. And give you the power of overcoming whatever obstacles that might hinder you. He said, I exhort you, brethren. Warn them that are unruly. Now, let, me, let me deal with that a moment parenthetically. Because you see, some will pick that verse up and start wailing it around as though they have the authority of God to tell somebody else how to live their lives. And therefore, if they see somebody walking in a way that they feel is not becoming to them, and they want to manage their life while their lives, their own life is still unmanaged itself. Warn them that are Unruly. Comfort the feeble minded. Support the weak. And look at this, look at this, verse 14. Be patient towards all men. Now, you know, I have to say this because some folk will challenge you to the extent that they will literally get on your last nerve. 
And you see him coming and you say, oh, no, I ain't got time for this. But that's not what the Bible says. It says, be patient. You don't know what that individual is going through. That's just like rejoicing. Some folk get angry in church because somebody's on their feet praising God. Why don't they sit down? Every Sunday, they just always all over the place. I wish I had a, well, you don't know what that person is rejoicing for. You don't know what God has done in their life. And you ought to be rejoicing yourself. Is that right? I, I, and so be patient towards all men. I may not be all that I should be. But by the grace, graces of God, I'm not what I used to be. And uh, see that you uh, don't render evil for evil. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and with all men. In other words, there is a moral philosophy that dictates uh, what is right before man and God. Now we are dealing with a skewed environment, a philosophy uh, that deletes the moral quality of directive insight. In other words, you lie so much until the reason you can't stop lying is because you done started believing it yourself. <laughs> distractions. The world is filled with distractions. And it might get worse before it ever get better, but I stop by to tell you there's still hope. There's still hope. The hope is in God. So he says rejoice. Rejoice evermore. And then he says to pray without ceasing. Now, our thinking about prayer is generally based upon our own mental conception. We ought to think of prayer more as a breath which fills our lungs and the flow of blood from our heart that moves through our arteries and give us the benefit of activity. Our blood flows. And our breathing continues without ceasing. And we're not given to the conscious effort that would otherwise be employed to cause it. But it never stops. I wish I had a witness. We're not always conscious of how the life of Jesus is keeping us in perfect peace with God. You're not here because you've been so holy. You're here because God was the mediator between you and God. You're here because, Lord help me, God has sent his son. And his son has paid a price. And standing as the propitiation for our sin, it's the son that has the power to ward off would-be dangers thought of constant threat. Prayer is not an exercise. Prayer is the life of a saint. And so when he says pray without ceasing, he's not saying uh, pray repetitiously, pray consistently, and don't take a break. Prayer should be a inevitable part of your daily walk. You see, we are so prone to formalities that we feel unless you're down on your knees, you're not really praying. Uh -huh. uh, unless you're in a certain posture, you, you, you're not really praying. 
unless you have the ability, the quality to enunciate words in a way that are not only familiar, but thrilling and movingly emotionally. Uh, we don't think that you're praying. Now, Lord. That, I can't say that isn't a prayer, but it's not the only prayer. Because there's going to be some times and some places and some things that might occur that you won't have time to call on Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When Peter found himself away from the ship in the deep waters, he looked back and he said, Lord, save me. And therefore, your walk and your talk with God should be a walk and a talk. That is unconsciously given to the emotion of his presence. Walk with me. Walk with me. While I'm on this Christian journey, I need the Lord. Wish I had a witness up in here. Anybody else in the house need the Lord? I, 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 I need the Lord to walk with me. And therefore, uh, I was taught that God not only hears prayers, but he answers prayers in the best ways. Not just sometimes, but actually he answers them all the time. And the evidence of an answer in an area that you might want immediate attention to follow uh, may not be given to you to understand, but we do expect God to answer prayer. When you pray, God does hear. When you think that he doesn't hear your prayer, it's because you haven't taken the time to examine the response of his answer. Yeah. Or he didn't answer like you wanted him to answer. I had a grandmother, and my mom was pretty good at it too. If I were doing something mischievously, more especially in church, and my, my mother was a in the choir, and I could be in the back back there. She couldn't get to me, but she posture herself. Y'all don't hear me. She didn't have to say a word, but I heard her. You see, sometimes when God answers, he's posturing himself. You're thinking that he's not answering when the point is, is that you just refuse to listen. Therefore, if you're going to pray, understand that you should be praying effectively. And so the efficacy of prayer begins with knowing that God always hears and that God knows what you are going to ask before you even ask. He knows what's best for us. And James, Jesus' brother, said in his first chapter of his book that bears his name, he says, my brethren, count it all joy. I wish I had a witness. C count it, count it, count it joy when you fall into divers temptation. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith, work in patience. Let perfect have, patient have her perfect work. That you may be perfect and entire, 
wanting nothing. You see, I, I have to stop there because we, we miss that. We, we miss that. He said, let patience have her perfect work. Sometimes you got to just crowd and tell your brother, just be patient with me. Maybe I didn't get it right this time, but God is just not through with me yet. Do I have a witness? Be, 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 be patient. And let it have its perfect work. And you will discover uh, that you will become perfect in that area, wanting for nothing more. And I stop to tell you of a surety. If he never does another thing for me, anybody feel me out here? If he never does another thing for me, he, he's, he's already done enough. James said, but if you lack wisdom, if you're praying, you can ask God for some. I wish I had a witness. And he'll give it to you as he give all men liberally. But let him that ask, ask in faith. Not wavering in your thought. Uh, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. James said, don't let that man think he's going to receive anything of the Lord. Let me share that with you as I close here. Because as I was coming up, doing that short span, I didn't have a long span, but doing that short span, when I thought I knew everything, you know that span. You, that, that span when you thought you knew everything. And, 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 and if you couldn't do what you wanted to do, you thought you were being mistreated. I want to go to the party. But I know I hadn't done all that I should have been doing at home. And my friends start calling me. I started getting excited even in my spirit and I needed to be able to plead my case because I needed to go to this party. Y'all y'all remember that window? I, I, I just needed to go to that party. Uh, and, and so I would go and I would say, uh, mom, 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 I guess I can't go to the party, huh? Didn't work too well, did it? <laughs> and so sometimes we talk our own self out of our blessing. And therefore, when we look at the efficacy of prayer, I can tell you from experience that when it doesn't change things, it sure will change you. Can I get a witness? And I got to close here today with a testimony. Because God has done great things for me. Before I realized even who I was, God was already blessing me. During those moments when I had a very ungrateful attitude, God was looking beyond my faults and still supplying my needs. Do I have a witness? Uh, even now, I can't say that I got it all right. But I can tell you that I know where my help comes from. If you don't mind me saying it, uh, my help comes from the Lord. Is that right? And every now and then I find myself in the midst of difficulties. Every now and then I find myself going through hard trials and sometimes tribulations. But I heard James said, count it all joy 
when you fall into diverse temptation. Is that right? And so therefore today, I know a way to please God. I just start thanking him for what he's already done. Is that all right? Every now and then, I have to share with somebody that I once was lost, but now I'm saved. I once was blind, but now I can see y'all. Is that all right? I once didn't have hope, but now I got hope for tomorrow. I once was on meager means, but now I have the strength and the means to overcome all difficulties. Isn't God all right? And I'm glad that while you might try to keep me down, God is in the business of picking me back up again. Oh, Lord, while you're trying to shut me out, God has already said he's preparing a place for me. Is that all right? And while I'm here, I just want to give credence to him. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but this is a day that the Lord has made. Is that right? And I got a made of mine. And I got a double determination that I'm going to praise him while I have a chance. Isn't God all right? I'm glad while I was yet in my sin, he looked beyond all my faults and still continued to bless me. Is that right? Look down and sent his own son in order to deliver me. The son gave his own life to pay the price that I might have the right to the tree of life. Is that all right? And if the Lord never does anything else for me, he's already done enough just for little old me. Isn't God all right? Isn't God all right? I got the clothes here, but they led him. You know the story today. From Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall on my account. Is that right? I heard that he never said a mumbling word. Great God in defense of my trial is that right but i heard the same folk that praised him just a few days ago spied out and said crucify him is that right they led him over to the governor's house and i heard Pontius Pilate uh, said, why don't you speak up, man? Uh, don't you know uh, I've got the power uh, to release you uh, and set you free? Uh, is that right? Uh, but I heard, uh, I heard uh, the Lord said, uh, you don't have any power uh, except for that power uh, that comes from on high. You want power? I'll show you power. They led him out of Pilate's courtyard on a dusty street called the Via Della Rosa and up a hill called Calvary. And oh, Calvary, they stretched the Savior wide. Is that right? On, on Calvary, they hung him high. They dropped him low, yeah, up on that hill. Is that right? But that's not the end of it. On Calvary, he dotted every I and crossed every T. That isn't all. On Calvary, he died. Anybody know he died? He died that I live. Isn't God all right? Yes. I heard, I heard that he died until the earth started reeling and rocking. He died 
God until the dawn. The sun stopped shining. Is that right? Oh, Calvary, just for me. He died until it got so dark you can hardly find your way. I heard the Lord said, excuse me, great God, let me talk to my father. Is that all right? Every now, every now and then, you ought to pray without ceasing in all circumstances, in all season, to catch the season when it comes. Excuse me now, I heard Jesus said, Father, Great God, I've come this far along my way. Father, great God, I've done what you told me to do. Yes, now, Father, into thine hands I commit my spirit. And he laid down his life and he died. Is that right? Didn't he die? Yes. He died that I might have the right to the tree of life. But that's not all. Just when I thought all hope was gone, the Bible says, early, 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 Sunday morning, he got up. Yes, isn't God all right? Yeah, yes, you want to praise the Lord without ceasing. Uh, isn't he all right? Uh, I'm glad. I tell you, I'm glad the Lord got up early that same Sunday morning with all power. Look at your neighbor. Look at your friend and say, don't worry. Don't despair. God's got this in his hand. I commit my spirit. Yes, I am. He got the power to release you and set you free. He's got the power to deliver you even from your enemies. Isn't God all right? I heard the Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord show some sign. He said, all right, every now and then, when I think about how far the Lord has brought me some, all I can do is wave my hand and say, Lord, I thank you. It's another day's journey, and I'm glad about that. Is that right? Every time I think about how good the Lord has been to me, my soul cries out and say yes unto the Lord. Have you cried out? You ought to say yes unto the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. Yes to the Lord. He's all right. Good God from Zion. The Bible said let everything that has breath Praise him. You ought to praise him. He woke you up this morning, started you on your way. You ought to praise him. He's worthy. He's worthy. Isn't God all right? I said, isn't God all right? Look at your neighbor one more time and say, neighbor, prayer will work things out. Prayer will change things. Prayer will Pick you up, prayer will turn you around. Know the Lord, surely He'll make a way. Oh, yes, He will. Let me say it again. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. When I'm burdened and I don't know just what to do. Whoa, I go to him. Yes, yes. I go to him in secret prayer. 
can leave all of my burdens there. I know the Lord. He's gonna make a way. He will. Let me tell you something about this thing. I've got a Savior. Ooh, I can tell all. I can tell my problems too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm weary and I don't know just what to do. Oh, I go to him. Yes, yes. I go to him in secret yes, prayer. Yes, yes. I can leave yes, yes. all of my my burdens yes, right there. Yes, yes. I know the Lord. I know the Lord. He's gonna make a way. Make a way. Yes, he will. Oh, yeah. Watch this. We used to do it like this. Yes, yes he will. Yes he will. Yes he will. Yes he will. Yes, my God will. Yes he will. Yes he will. Yes he will. Oh, he will. Yes he will. Yes he will. I know the Lord God. He will. The Lord. I know the Lord. Make a way. Make a way. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, sometime up. Yes, yes. Lord knows I'm sometimes yes, down. Yes, yes. Sometimes I'm late. Yes, 